Good morning everyone and welcome to this uh, session. My name is Giuseppe Magia and my colleague here is uh, Andrei Hilistov. We are going to talk about the event scheduler, which is part of my spell by one. And first, a bit of presentation. My colleague is uh, Andrei Hilistov. He's a MySQL engineer and is the author of the event scheduler and is the author of many interesting things that have been uh, happening to MySQL ecosystem recently. So he's the <coughs> right person to talk to you about this project uh, and you will uh, know more from him. I work with MySQL uh, in the community team. I also known as the Data Charmer. Uh, this my blog, the Data Charmer, blogspot.com, has many uh, posts about the event scheduler and also other hacks uh, that you can do in MySQL. About the slides, you will find the slides uh, online, and uh, I will show this address at the end of the presentation. First of all, we want your feedback. So if you have a, twi a Twitter account, just send something to uh, MySQL.com and or send something to me. If you don't have a Twitter account, use something else like a blog about that. You can use uh, posters.com. Bless you. Or you can find my boss in the corridor and tell him that uh, you really like the, uh, the way we present. So, MySQL 5.1 GA. The thing that you see on the screen is the same thing that I'm wearing. It's a t-shirt that was uh, made uh, when we released MySQL 5.1. So, all the people that received this t-shirt have their names on the back. So this was created for the people who contribute to MySQL 5.1. But if you see somebody who's wearing this t-shirt, like my dear colleague uh, Andre, or myself, or Alexei who's sitting there, we can answer the other questions. So find a way. Okay. Um, of course, we're here. About the event schedule. So it started a project uh, in 2004 when I had to do my master thesis. And the idea was to create a cron job for MySQL. So internally, okay, uh, again, internally, I know we have an external program to control um, the execution of procedures or uh, some other code. So, um, what we did, we looked at what, what, what is there on the market, um, what other products do, and uh, design it like it's, it's now. So, um, in a much fair way, uh, it'll be easy to use and um, straightforward. Because, like, Oracle has it, Microsoft has it, DB2 has it, Postgres doesn't have. Uh, SQLite doesn't have so uh, on the upper uh, front only MySQL has that. And we call them uh, temporal triggers, but sometimes they call events. Depends how you, um, what, uh, which uh, term you want to use. Um, they're not related to a specific table. I mean, uh, they're triggers. We call them triggers, but they're not you know, table triggers. They're uh, based on time. And they execute SQL code, or um, if you use some other uh, hacks, you can execute arbitrary code at given time or uh, at given interval. So either uh, you can check, if you put it Unix, there is the add and the scroll. The so add starts at a specific time, cron at specific intervals. Yes. Uh, so how it works? We have a um, First, um, when you create it with the SQL statement, we'll see later how it's stored in a table in the MySQL uh, database, MySQL.event table, and at the same time it's loaded in memory 
course of the schedule is work. So we have um, disk representation and memory representation. And the scheduler in the memory, there is a queue, order the queue, and it checks if there is time, if the time has come for executing an event and stars it in a different thread. So it's isolated and you can start um, almost as many threads as you want. It depends on how many connections you have. So actually it reuses the number of uh, connections in the server. Before that it was possible to start like you have uh, limited 200 connections but you started 1000 threads and it was kind of possible to make the denial service. So it's a regular thread and um, it looks like that, uh, like one. Um, you can see from the show process list. Okay, and we are going to see some examples of uh, how many events you can create at once. So the idea is that um, before the schedule existed, people had to write scripts like Coro or PHP scripted from Chrome or from uh, the Windows um, scheduler to be able to do some regular work. And um, that means that you have two entities. You have the server and the script, which is outside it, and you have to back up things and move uh, uh, software around. You have to move two entities. While with the integrated schedule uh, events, you can just you move, make right of your database to make server or uh, just create it and then you have it. It's internal um, and you can depend on it. And of course that means that um, you don't need to write scripts if you're used to writing core procedures. Um, it's very easy. There is no overhead also from uh, client server protocol. From client server protocol. server, either by a um, command line option, event uh, dash scheduler, or uh, as a server variable. So it's possible to start it, uh, so event scheduler takes three options, 0, 1, and off. So if you start it with off, you can't use it during the runtime, so you cannot start it later with uh, using the global variable. If it's 0, 1, as of if it's 0, it's not started, but it's loaded in memory, and if it's 1, load in memory and start executing correctly. And during runtime, you can stop, start and stop the, the scheduler, but you should know, like, if an event is already running, and you start to stop the scheduler, but the event continues to run. So, yeah, if you want to stop the event, you should kill the process. That's the way to do it. So, once, once the event has started, it's uh, independent from the show the scheduler thread. You can uh, also, with show process things, you can see the scheduler thread uh, and uh, also, ki also kill it, which will actually stop the, uh, uh, stop the scheduler. It's possible. So, the very important thing that you have to remember about the events is that uh, you create them, but you don't see them in the same uh, windows, uh, in the same uh, terminal, in the same client application where you create that. So you have to uh, create the event and then check the effects. So if you have an event that is supposed to run every month, start the next month, it's a good idea to put a, a shorter term and check if it's doing something that is supposed to do before uh, waiting for the, the right time. Maybe in a month from now you forgot about that and uh, if you don't check, you may be surprised. Uh, can, can I yes. So actually it's possible to test it. So you can uh, play with system clock and say create it, store it next month. You, you turn, turn back the clock, you create the event and then stop the scheduler then set the right time, then start the scheduler, and in a few seconds, if you're at the right time, it will start the event. So you can see actually, the, uh, so you can, if you want to play, uh, see whether it's working, you can do that. But you should start and stop the scheduler. 
take you a day. Or you can also use a different uh, time. So instead of saying uh, do it every every month, you can say do it every minute and then stop the schedule and check the effects. What's the question there? Um, is there a, a log where you can check that an event, uh, which, uh, an, event should, uh, an event has actually occurred and when the last time it occurred? Uh, like a, a timestamp maybe in the MySQL table? Yeah, in, in, uh, in the MySQL event, so we'll see later, but in the MySQL event table there is a last time last timestamp when it was executed, when it was created also. Um, and also from the information schema there is a table we can see also the same information if you can, don't have access actually to the underlying must be event table. But there is no log how many times it was executed. Actually there is a uh, there was a bug that was a feature first before. Uh, so initially uh, you could see in the error log uh, all the execution of the events. But uh, since the error log should contain only errors, that was a bit of a stretch and uh, we had some discussion internally and we decided that uh, it was a bug after all and we removed it. So I'm going to show you the difference uh, in practice using the MySQL 5130 where the bug was not fixed yet and 5133 uh, where we, we have a clean error log. Also, um, the, the event scheduler has integrated the bug internal one so it can actually see the state of the, the of some internal information. Uh, probably you know the common line from MySQL admin and if you say MySQL admin debug the server will throw at six LL log information on the mobile, but not only about scheduler, about memory usage and things like that, but you can see um, when the next event will be executed, um, where, it, where the scheduler is sleeping or it, is it working, when it's possible to debug it. But uh, you have to be able to access the error log of the server. You. So if you want to create an event, you need to, to know the syntax. Uh, you can do this uh, in, a, in any client that is connected to a MySQL 5.1 server. So remember that uh, the event scheduler must be on to, to execute an event, but you can create events uh, regardless of the status of the event scheduler. So you can create the events and then start the event scheduler and the event will, uh, uh, will be done. So to create an event you can do two things. Either you decide to run the event only once, the given time, or you decide to run the event uh, every every 10 minutes, every 10 seconds, uh, hours, day, month, year, week, actually, actually you can also use quarters, week, I don't remember what else, but you can see that in the manual. The most uh, used uh, time frame are in this slide. So, you decide what to do, and then uh, you decide when to do it, and then you decide what. What could be two things? Either it could be one SQL statement or it could be calling a procedure. And the SQL statement could be simple or composite, like the store procedures. So you can have a begin, all the statements, and then end, and this will be your event. Questions? Yes. One. With respect to the events management, you say every eight, 10 seconds, for instance. Yes. Less than it's what? Zero, 10 seconds, 20 seconds, or is it depend on the startup time? If it starts at 7 seconds, it's the next one, 17, and 27. I mean, I tell it, I want a service granularity. I want a bit too well. You can define when to start. That is uh, in the uh, of the slide. Yes, if you are using the MySQL uh, client, yes. If you are using PHP or Perl or whatever, anything else, 
kilometro. So uh, you just say um, like uh, starts. So you define from which Friday you will see on the next slide. You can define at what uh, at which date it starts, at what time, and then you say every one day, uh, every one week. And so it will execute only on Friday. On Friday. And uh, you should know like uh, first three, so the second minute and hour, they like it's absolute time. We know what the second, what a minute, and what an hour is. They are like uh, divisible by uh, so minute is 60 seconds, hour is 360 of the day. But the month it depends, right? It, it's, uh, and um, it's really a month. So if it's um, 20th of April, it will execute on 20th of uh, May. If it's one month or three months, it doesn't depend. Uh, so if you have different days in the month, it works. And uh, as I said, he said that there is a quarter, which actually uh, is like three months. You just can specify three months. Yes. Can you say like uh, run something five, uh, every five minutes during the day, and that's not during the night you can run it every one minute, for example, right? Uh, or vice versa? No, no, you can't say it at once, but let's say uh, instead of writing the whole body, it's the statement, you can write the procedure and then create two events for the event. Yes, one event for the night and one for the day. Thanks. So this is a theory, let's see um, some more. Oh, another question, yes. Can I write an event that write an event? Uh, create an event that creates an event? No, I think it has been disabled recently because there was some uh, uh, side effects. So you cannot create an event uh, from inside an event. Yeah. yeah. So the problem is not in the scheduler, the problem is in the server, in the parser. The parser is not made to, so you can create recursive, so even with store procedures, Inside the store procedure, you cannot create a store procedure because um, the parser is not oriented. That's the problem. But I try to make it as, as much as possible. So you cannot create event and event. You can call alter events, you will probably see me later. And, uh, but you cannot change the body because you can't parse it. But you can change different things. So it starts, and these things you can change. Oh, you can also drop an event from an uh, event. So an event actually can be uh, polymorphic. So like polymorphic viruses could change themselves. If the event knows its body, its name, it can change in runtime. You say like it starts once, and then it says you can change it to start like 10 seconds. Uh, so first time it starts after 5 seconds, then it can start after 10 seconds, and then after 15 seconds, so uh, with the time. You can do that. It's possible, so you but you can create an event. So you could make it check the time and yeah. say at night run, alter itself to run every... Yeah, actually that's possible. So uh, the event can uh, uh, change itself, but not the body. If you really want to, there is a way. And uh, I will show the hack at the end of the presentation. So. Theoretically, you cannot create an event from an event, but with uh, some ingenuity and uh, hacking the server in the right way, you don't have to write the server, but you can uh, just uh, follow the presentation until the end, uh, and then you will uh, suddenly see the idea coming, coming up. So you can, uh, you cannot, so I not recommend it, it's not in the manual, I didn't say that, but <laughs> can be done. So what else you can do with events? And not only uh, you can decide uh, decide uh, when you want the event to start, but you can also define uh, some <coughs> additional conditions for the for the event to to start. So you can say on completion preserve or not preserve. If you run an event at a given time, it will be removed after execution, unless you say on completion preserve. <coughs> then you can define when you want to start it. So you want to say uh, every 10 minutes, but not now. You want to start in one week. And when to end it. So you want to 
to say it starts in one week and it will uh, finish. Not events anymore, one month from now. Additionally, you can say enable or disable. So you can uh, say everything you want with this event and then say disable and eventually enable it when you decide that it's the right time. So there is a lot of flexibility going on. You can plan in advance, create all your, the events you need and then just uh, with one command you can uh, make them start. So let's see a practical example finally. The first uh, example is one event that starts at a given time. So this one starts on uh, 2009, April 21st, at uh, uh, 5 to 4. And what does it do? It will insert it inside uh, one table using the values gotcha now. Another possibility is possibilities that uh, you define, instead of uh, absolute time, you can define the time as uh, relative to now. So you say now plus and, uh, 20 minutes. So 20 minutes from now, you will call any procedure. But that's one time, right? This is one time. Okay? Does it make sense? <coughs> Everything clear? So you can define the time in two ways, either absolutely or relative to your current time. The calling event is uh, similar. Instead of saying at, you will say the interval that you want to use. So every 20 minutes, every 7 days, or every 10 weeks, whatever. The, the body is what can be whatever you want. As long as it can be compiled to a store procedure, what is valid for store procedure is valid also for an event. And just one, uh, just one more thing. It's just like we have an example every 20 minutes, but you can specify every 20 plus 10. It, it can be an expression. And uh, you can't use sub queries. That's, uh, we had that, and we had problems because using because on the line table is my item, and we decided to disable that. It was possible, but uh, there were crashes, and the problem was disabled. So just expressions. But you can use, um, I think yeah, I remember well. You can use variables. Use the variables. We can try online. Yes. Yes, you can do. So instead of saying uh, call some procedure, you can, or instead, uh, instead of saying insert, you can do begin everything you want and and uh, it will work. So the same thing that uh, you can do in a stop procedure, you can do with uh, the back. There is a practical reason for using a store procedure that I'm going to show later. Well, uh, that could be because you have to compile it once. Uh, otherwise, you just. But they think, like, because uh, the server doesn't have a global uh, store procedure cache, so the procedures are compiled per connection. So, and um, every event. Start event and top event is another thread, but you compile it every time. Either if it's a block statement or if it's a sort procedure, it's all the time. Let's go over here. Yeah. Let's what is that? That's uh, that limitation of my scale. <coughs> yeah. Actually, what, what we did in the parser, we just uh, reused the parsing of the stored procedures after the two flows and then we use the object compiler. So it's, it's more or less like a stored procedure with some uh, more uh, with best instance Yes, please. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We, we 
will recover that uh, later on. So the question was uh, how do the event uh, uh, work with replication and we are going to talk about that uh, in a later slide. In uh, this slide you can see some flexibility of the event, uh, so I decide to run this event every 10 minutes uh, to start uh, in 2 hours and to end it 2 hours later. Is it readable? It is uh, fairly understandable, I think uh, you should agree that this is easy to, to maintain. Any questions on that? So once you create the event, you can look for what you have done. So if you do a show event in the database where you create the event, you can see some information related to the event. Uh, the information is not complete, but you can get more in a different way. So show events will tell you uh, the, the name of the event, uh, the kind of uh, recording, the kind of uh, event that is it, so it's a uh, recording or uh, only one time, when it starts and if it's enabled. This is the important things that you need to know. Uh, one thing that uh, we probably didn't mention but uh, it's important to, to remember, events uh, are not uh, related to a table, but they are related to a schema, so they are related to a database. So you cannot create an event without having a database. It, you need one database, otherwise you cannot create events. Yeah, and there the name, uh, the names are case insensitive, like with our procedures. But you can, can can have the same name in different databases. It's okay, in different schemas. But for uh, for schema, just the name should be unique. <coughs> it's not procedures. So you know, no, no, it's all procedures. You have to have store procedure with the same name and event with the same name because they they uh, they stored in different tables, or different metadata. And just if I can add here for start, because MySQL is not a real-time operating system, we say uh, we try to do it every 10 seconds, but it can be like 11 seconds, it won't be nine seconds. So the event can start a bit later. It can be like uh, you start. You have created it at um, so midnight, and then you have after the second you have like 95, and then must come in time, and then it will be the next time at 11 seconds. So it can happen. If you can also load on the machine, you can see that actually the time is not. Uh, I have seen that with <coughs> internally when you test the ball grind, and then things get really slow. And you can see also race conditions in that case, in, if there is, uh, there are ones. But, uh, Could you clarify again for, for the first part of the So, um, me, by example, let me say, if you schedule something to yeah. start at midnight, and it starts at midnight at one second, yeah. and it says the events are scheduled an hour apart, yeah. is, is it going to lag progressively? No, an hour it will, after? Next, next time it will, be, it will try to uh, midnight and 10 seconds, midnight and 20 seconds, okay. although it has started, the previous one has started. Okay. But if you all, so if your event takes more than interval, you get to the events lot low, and sure. then you get a you get a problem. Yeah. Yes, this is information. This is available on the information schema. Yeah. Yes. Uh, it's next slide. Next slide. Um, one thing that uh, you should be careful with uh, events is that uh, you should <coughs> not create uh, an event that takes more than, than the interval. Otherwise, you may be in trouble. So if you have a, a procedure that uh, takes uh, 10 minutes to execute, and you want to execute that every five minutes, you will really have trouble. And it's possible like, to say show events from Shima, like something, just like for tables. So it supports that syntax. So, so it doesn't take longer than it is possible. I mean, it's not uh, forbidden. The only, uh, as Andrei said before, once the event starts, it's independent from the event scheduler. It, it's uh, its uh, its own uh, thread. But 
if you, you know, if you have an event that starts every five minutes, it takes ten minutes to complete, you do the math. So they are running in parallel. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So if you have more, de more demanding and you need more information about your events, you can look at the information schema and uh, you have uh, more information than uh, you, <coughs> you see in, uh, in show events. Then, now, the, the screenshot is very long, so the first part of the screenshot is almost the same that you can get from the show events. And then on the bottom, uh, okay, the main difference here is that you have the event definition that you don't have in, uh, in show events. Here you get uh, the uh, event definition that could be as simple as call procedure one, or you can have the whole uh, body of the event uh, depending on uh, how you define it. And in the second part, you have information like uh, what time it starts, where it ends, if you uh, define that, and then last order and last execute. This is uh, if you want to, uh, to run your monitor, you can use the information schema for that. So somebody asked me before, how can I uh, see the, the timestamp of the events for the event from here? Sorry, you mentioned you need a schema to start creating the events, right? Yes, you, you need a schema to start an event. But your event doesn't necessarily um, create that schema. The event uh, can do whatever you want. I mean, you can create this, the, the event in a centralized schema that you keep only for events, and then uh, it will do uh, stuff in other, uh, in other schemas, or can call a stop procedure in different schemas. But remember, it has the same limitation that has uh, any other stop procedure. So a stop procedure is belongs to a schema and can <coughs> to start by default in the schema where it was created. The same happens for events. So if you, want, if you want to do something in a separate schema, it's a good idea to create a procedure in that schema and uh, uh, use, uh, use the event by calling the, that schema, that, that procedure. Make sense? Chinese, whatever you want, 
it's possible, no matter what uh, operating system, uh, what the line operating system you use. And then we use rename database, you do all. My database is old one, I just rename to a new name, and then just rename to the old name. But then you get a new encoder, and therefore it was the database was great. That's just a side Okay, once you create an event, you can uh, rethink what you have done and change them. Uh, all the event uh, it works uh, almost like a create event, so you can uh, repeat uh, part of the uh, creation event uh, statement to modify what you want. The mandatory part is that you have to repeat the event name and uh, on scheduled part. Everything else uh, uh, can, it's, uh, can be there or cannot be there. So if you want to change uh, the start, you have to repeat the event name on schedule and then you can add the start. If you, you cannot just add other event start now. It uh, doesn't accept it. <coughs> Maybe I should find a bug report. No, but you can do like alter event, the name and disable. That's it. You don't that, need to yes, but that one is. Uh, yeah, that's possible. So you, uh, if you want to create, to change uh, the procedure to call, you just uh, say create event, uh, no, other event, event name on schedule, and then do something different. So when to use the event scheduler? When is it useful? You can do a lot of things with uh, with this. You can do mostly is used for data cleanup. You can do consistency checks. Uh, much more than you can do with uh, foreign keys. So you can define your rules and uh, check uh, uh, with events that uh, everything is fine. Or you can uh, refresh uh, data that uh, should change periodically. For instance, if you look at the dev mysql.com articles, there is an article by Greg Hayes who has uh, um, used the event scheduler to, uh, to trim uh, partitions and create new partitions. So he, will, uh, he removes the, the old ones and creates new ones. Or is very much useful for uh, ETL operations. If you want to create summary tables uh, or prepare data for data warehousing, this is uh, very, very helpful. So one limitation that uh, uh, I need to mention, and uh, we will see something later on, you cannot use external resources uh, like uh, sending email <coughs> or checking your operating system. But there is something for that one as well. Yeah, and if the event has an output, it gets lost, because it does not. <laughs> well, there is no way to, we, you can store it. You can store uh, it uh, but of, of course, if you, you can use like uh, some uh, inserting on a table, yeah. but if you do a select inside the event, then it's gone. Sure. Oh, yeah, so either insert select or uh, select into out file, but otherwise not, uh, your output is lost. Yes? Uh, for the downtime, not. They'll start like, uh, what we do, we look what is the current time, then we um, find which will be the next after the current time. So we just simple arithmetic and you can find what will be the next time. Just it's the, 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 the division. So you just want to assign Which one? No, the old ones, you know, yeah, if you just add some uh, point of time, it will never be executed. Right? And you actually, when you start, it, it, it's not on preserve, it will be dropped. So if you have a disabled event, uh, which are not preserved, and uh, you start the server, and they should not be executed anymore, the server, uh, server will, will purge the table. So we won't get that. So if, for instance, if you define an event that starts in 10 seconds from now, but the event scheduler is not on, and you start the event scheduler in one minute, it won't work. The same, uh, the same situation. 
if you declare, if you create a, uh, an event and say start in one hour and run it at maybe 10 minutes, when there's a, a system restart, will the uh, event start in one hour and then run in 10 seconds every 10 minutes or will it start running every 10 minutes? Okay, okay. let's make an example. You, you define today, now, that you want to start in one hour and the system uh, goes down. When the system uh, goes up, it, it will not try to define in one hour, it will define in one hour, in, in, your definition of in one hour will be stored as an absolute time. So uh, if the time has arrived, it will start. If the time has not arrived yet, it won't start. Uh, let, me, let me be more clear. You start, uh, when you say you start in one hour, it will be noon. So if the system crashes now and is uh, um, up before noon, it won't start. If it starts after noon, it will start your event. But what I said is, uh, if you say today, you say start in one hour and run for every ten minutes forever, and then there's this, you do a restart for some reason in, in, in a week, for example, right? And you, st you start the system again in a week. Uh, will it run every 10 minutes or will it wait? Every 10 minutes. Time? So if you put it on a time scale, like and then say every 10 minutes on the scale, if you this the scale, and then in some interval of time your server doesn't work, you just remove it and everything else works and it will be just 10 minutes every time. Right. Yeah. Look at this, uh, the start is, is not a, a relative time, it's an absolute time. So once you, say, you, you, you define start in one hour, okay, one hour is converted to whatever it is in that moment. So, something that you need to be aware of. Uh, the events are not preserved, so if you want them to be preserved, you have to state that explicitly. And one thing that uh, uh, is not easy to to catch if you have some, uh, if you are using a raw based application, is that the pin log format is the one uh, in the scheduler thread, not the one that was used in the client that created it. What is the pin log format? When you are using a raw based application, you can define the, the format of your pin log. It could be statement or row or mix. You can define this as a client or you can define that uh, for the server. So, at the moment uh, when the client starts, the general bin log uh, format uh, will be used uh, by the event scheduler. If you change the general bin log uh, format, the event scheduler will still have the old one. So you have to restart the event scheduler if you want uh, the <coughs> bin log format to uh, catch with the event scheduler. I tell you this because I had a strange uh, uh, bug that was really, really hard to catch and fix. So I finally found out that this was the problem. So does that mean that actually when you execute an event on the master, it doesn't execute on the slave. You replicate the result. Because otherwise you can't be sure that on the, the slave the events will be executed in the same order. So what difference does it make if it's row or uh, value case? It makes a difference uh, in very small cases. Uh, uh, if you have the, the bin log format row and you call something like uh, uh, server ID, then uh, if you are using the statement format, it will send the function. And then the, on the slave, uh, you will add the, the server ID of the slave. If you are using a row format, then you will add the, the server ID of the master. So it's not a lot of uh, things that uh, will affect that, but sometimes it's uh, these tiny little problems that are hard to identify and to fix. Then there is something more about the uh, replication that uh, we're going to see in the next slide. Uh, errors. The errors of the next schedule don't go to the client. So you don't see them. They go to the error log. 
So you have to see externally, not inside the application. One thing that you have to, to remember is that if there is an error in the definition of the event scheduler in the body, so in the SQL statement, the error will be found when the event executes, not when you create it. So if you define an event that starts in one hour, you don't and you are referring to a table that doesn't exist, you won't see the error now. You will see the error where it runs. And this kind of error makes sense because you may have another event that will create that table. So it's supposed to work that way. But be <coughs> careful about that. Replication. So what you do uh, uh, when you create an event will be will be replicated the slave, uh, but it will be disabled. And it's not only disabled, but it's called the slave side disabled for a reason. You don't want to have it disabled manually and disabled by replication be confused. So this one is the slave side disabled that happens when you create something on the master. And uh, you may have uh, events that you define on the slave, legitimate ones, so you don't want to confuse them. You, want, you may want to create them, to disable them when you don't need them, and then to uh, re-enable. But the ones that come from the master uh, are marked as slave side disabled. So this is the difference. And the other thing important to remember is that uh, what the event do is replicated, not the events itself. And it's different from the table triggers. The table triggers are replicated only the creation of the table, but the actions of the triggers are not replicated. With events, you replicate the actions of the event, but the creation is disabled. That's because with triggers you can serialize, because the replication is serialized, there is just one connection, and then you, as you put them in the bin log, they will be executed on the server, on the statement, uh, uh, they will be executed on the server, but with events, it will be on time, and you never be at the same, you can never have the same time on the slave as on the master. explains very well what you should do when you promote a state in the master. And, but there is a problem. Once you do that, you lose the information which were from the master, the old master, the master <coughs> state. That's a bit of a problem. I mean, if you do the change them to enable, just to start them to run, they will be mixed with the local, so to speak. It was, it was, it was late, now it's a master which runs, and then you cannot differentiate which were from the old master or which are from the slave. Actually, in the manual there is a trick about this uh, that is explained in detail, but uh, we don't go okay. into okay. this uh, because uh, it's going to, uh, to take a lot of time. But if you look at the, uh, the next scheduler in the manual, there is a very practical example of exactly this uh, problem, and it tells you how to um, alter the, the events uh, in the slave and to identify exactly the ones that were disabled by the master. Okay? One thing that uh, uh, I have mentioned before and uh, I mention again, the web schedule do not, uh, cannot access the updated system by default or by the manual or whatever. Anyway, it's not there. So you cannot send email, you cannot list directories, you cannot uh, uh, write files uh, or run applications. But there is something that you can do about that. In certain two of them works, right? In certain two of them right? In certain two, it will work, yeah. but only once. What's it? You cannot override with selecting the whole file. But you can always, I mean, say, 
the start procedure, uh, the event work in 12 right? and then flex something, and you have a, 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 an external clone which sends the email. Oh, yeah, right. Now, is the file, you know, the um, selected word file works uh, only once? Because uh, with, with that file, if the file already exists, it doesn't work for a security reason of the MySQL server. So if you want to use that, you need to remove the file or do some, some other thing. So, tricks. I'm going to show you something quickly. We don't have much time. So, purchase the process list and uh, combine the event schedule with MySQL proxy and the federated tables to use the operating system commands. Let's see the the easy thing first, if you go to MySQL Forge and look for uh, tools and code, and look for tools and codes, tools and codes, and look for my name, you will find this uh, purge process list. Uh, uh, from uh, slow queries or other connectors, meaning that uh, you can uh, remove from the process list uh, uh, the queries that are idle and are just open, using connection or nothing. I will not go into details for this. I wrote a blog post about that. So you can uh, just uh, look at my blog and see the full description of this. So I was just mentioning that this is a cool way of uh, using uh, the event scheduler. What I want to show you instead is uh, the negation of what I said before, that you cannot access the operating system for the event scheduler. Now, what is the problem with the event scheduler? You can uh, access tables, but the tables are inside the MySQL server. So, the, the server is isolated inside the, uh, so you cannot uh, get anything from the operating system. However, if you have uh, some additional components, like a federated table, then uh, you can use this federated table together with MySQL proxy. And MySQL proxy can have a Lua script that uh, accesses the operating system. So also this one is in my, uh, is in my blog, but I want to show you an example. Is it clear how it works? So the event scheduler will refer to a table that exists inside the database, but the federated table is accessed through MySQL proxy. So this is the trick. So, and so on. Actually, uh, it's also possible to write your, your store changing, which in, gets information from the operating system and use it. Like, I've seen such examples, write your example store changing and select some of the, the lot of the system and everything else. As long as you can write these or you plug them into the server. In your case. Or I just keep plugging that sends email. It's up to you. So, what you have to do is to create a a federated table that refers to an existing table and uh, this federated table is accessed through port 4040 which is the port where the proxy uh, works. So now we have uh, um, the we have a table that is used through the proxy, and the proxy is started using the fed.lua script. And the fed.lua script, let's have a look. What does it do? Whenever you send an update and uh, is uh, sent to this uh, table T1, it will use the argument for uh, and we execute it. 
So now we have table T1 that has nothing inside. Whenever we do an update here, it will uh, <coughs> execute it and send the, the output to where the, the proxy is working. So describe T1. We have one browser <coughs> and one uh, command. So the, the command will receive the command to execute. Update T1F, which is the stop which is the federated table, values one uh, sorry. set CMD equal ls and you can see in the other window it says that it received the command and it has ex executed it so using this trick you can do mostly whatever you want you can send email you can check if the operating system is full you can uh, uh, show pictures you can uh, destroy the database, you can create new events because nobody prevents you. So, you are in business. And I think we have exactly one minute to get some questions. Slides are there. Take a note if you want them. Yeah. Uh, be in the corridor and uh, 